Hi guys, welcome back to another unboxing video with Thomas. Today we're going to take a look at this big ass package here. And because it's a little bit cold outside, I'm going to go for a nice brandy. Cheers, guys. Mm. Very nice. Excellent stuff. Mm. Hope you're having something in the meantime as well. Right, so let's gut this little piggy. The uh, <laughs> packaging is uh, somewhat damaged. It's actually fairly torn in places. And GLS actually put a restoration tape over it. So Lord knows what happened. So hopefully it's still in good condition. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll find out, I guess. The total weight is 6.3 kilos. So I have high hopes. Okay. Oh, whoa, okay, yeah, so as I thought, there is no box or something under this that contains the boxes, it's just the boxes and some other stuff on top, which uh, rattles, so. <laughs> I'll have a good guess what that might be. You probably do too. I'm going to count to my fingers here. Right. Come on. Like it's packed in a really, really big bin bag or something. So. Come on then. Right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, let's just start from the top, I guess. I'll get rid of this bag when we uh, unpack the rest of it. Ah, gotta stay hydrated. Carefully cut through this. Don't want to scratch whatever is beneath it. I mean, you can see from the size, it's just, just keyboard boxes, but still. Uh, fucking hell. Oh, oh, look at that. It's uh, tubes. Yeah. Right, there you go. So, tube number one. Gatron G Pro 2.0 Switch Red. Nice. And Gatron Baby Kangaroo Tactile, tactile Switch. G Gatron Baby Kangaroo. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Baby Kangaroo. What? The <laughs> Man, the names they come up with for these switches is just getting more and more ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> right, so, um, I ran a, a Twitter poll a while ago. Uh, uh, Key Kong got into contact with me and asked me if I wanted to review one of the keyboards. I said there's been a lot of demand uh, for a Key Kong review but I'm not quite sure which one specifically people want to see. So I ran a poll and overwhelmingly the choice was for the Keychron Q. Obviously I went with the biggest model The I'm just gonna turn it over a little bit so you can see the packaging a bit better. Uh, the biggest one, which is the Q6, that's basically the full-size version. I hate small keyboards, uh, the bigger the better. Full size is really a minimum for me. So, um, obviously I went with that one, and then they said that they were going to release the Q Pro series soon as well. So I said, yeah, sure, you could send that along as well, uh, and then I can compare the two. And that is this one, the Keychron Q1 Pro. I think this is the only Q Pro they have at the moment, or at least the while I'm making this video. This is a 75% one. 
and uh, I'm not entirely sure whether I'm going to do two separate reviews, one for each of these keyboards or one big review where I directly compare the two. I guess it depends a bit on how different they are. Um, I suspect it's going to be the latter, but who knows? We'll uh, we'll see. Anyway, let's first get rid of. Oh, don't fall over. Let's first get rid of this. Crap! Go away! Fuck off! Right. So let's first start with the uh, Q6, I guess. Packaging is uh, weirdly peeled down here at the bottom. Not quite sure what that is. Almost like it's uh, rotted or something. Oh well. Anyway, it looks brand new, so it should be nice. It's pretty hefty, this thing. Keychron Q6, full-size mechanical keyboard. That sounds good. Jesus Christ, come on. Get the fuck. Oh, a little bit of a dent here. Makes sense. Right. This box looks pre. I mean, it's been dented pretty badly in some places, but it looks very tough, this box, so that shouldn't be a problem, really. Uh, Let's see, there was some sort of description on the. Yeah, there you go, on the back. Right. Full size layout. It leaves nothing out. You will get dedicated access to everything a keyboard can offer, such as the arrow keys, function row, and number pad. Ooh. <laughs> Those elusive arrow keys, function row, and number pad. Hmm? Dual compatibility, Mac OS and Windows. Makes sense. QMK and VIA. Well, nothing's perfect. Double gasket mount design. The design will provide the keyboard with a nice, flexible typing feel and a satisfying typing sound. Screw in stabilizer, CNC aluminium body. That's a 6063 aluminium, apparently. And sound absorbing foam. Interesting. Looks like there's a couple of color schemes here. I don't think I specified one. Oh, and <laughs> gotta show that. This is the. Uh, <laughs> no, can you see that? The knob version. <laughs> I wonder if that's meant personally. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> right. Let's uh, insert the thumb hole. Keychron, make sure switch pins are straight before inserting switch. Okay, whatever. Manual. Hopefully don't need that. Let's see. Cable, including an adapter for motherfucker USB C to USB A. I see that nowadays everywhere. That's nice. That's good. USB C to USB C cable is uh, is pretty good. It's useful nowadays. What else is? <coughs> Excuse me. In here. I had a lot of dim sum for dinner. Um, a couple of keycaps. I think these are probably just Windows keycaps as opposed to. Um, Mac OS ones or something. Some feet and sound absorbers and some screws. Nothing else in here other than the Jesus. Other than the keyboard. You know, come think of it. Maybe this is the first time I've ever tried one of these CNC aluminium bodies on a full-size keyboard. Most of them tend to be quite small. Um, but this might be the first full-size one. Obviously, it's not the first full metal keyboard I've ever tried, but these, you know, CNC aluminium custom-like keyboards, this might be the first full-size. Interesting. Get rid of that. Ooh, nice and sharp.
shiny, kind of matte, slightly bluish gray look to it. There you go. That looks pretty cool. Interesting keycaps. I already uh, noted that, but you might note that the keycaps look almost like vintage spherical keycaps, but they're cylindrical. The tops are cylindrical, not actually spherical. Um, there is a quick start guide in the bottom that makes it look like the keycaps are spherical, but they're in fact not. They're cylindrical. Uh, anyway, hopefully you don't need that. There's, the <laughs> there's a big old knob sticking out here, which is weird in a way because usually this knob is here, but there are a couple of extra keys here. This looks almost like is that PlayStation? Not very good with consoles. It looks almost like PlayStation keys. Um, hmm, I'm not quite sure what that's about. Does it say here in the quick start guide? No. Key. So let's have a look. Oh, it is quite silent actually. Hmm, interesting. Right, I forgot about the recording limit, so I don't know how much is actually clipped off the camera time, but I was just gonna take a look at the switches, which I looked at, they were apparently Gator on Brown or something like that, or at least they look like that. Um, uh, <laughs> I was a little bit in doubt as to whether it was um, tactile or linear, but I guess that yeah, I still can't tell. <laughs> but I guess that explains it, right? So, looks pretty cool. Switch at the back for switching between Windows and Mac. And a cable port, it already comes with feet. Uh, so I'm not quite sure where you're supposed to stick on the extra feet, I don't know. Interesting lettering. The lettering on the keycaps is very small, and some of them, especially the uh, backspace, looks a little bit weird, a bit squiggly. I don't know if you can see that. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, this looks uh, it looks pretty well made. It feels very solid. I mean, obviously it doesn't flex at all. Interesting. Ah, hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Um, looks like a pretty nice keyboard. Or uh, okay, ah, yeah, it, it does come with uh, Mac keycaps, by the way. So this is for changing to Windows. Ew, that means they assume that it's Mac by default. Ugh, disgusting. Anyway, um, let me put that away real quick while I uh, unbox the other keyboard. Go away. Might need that for reference in a little bit. Let's see what's on this box. Hmm, interesting. If it's actually the color scheme on this box, then it's a little bit different. 75% layout. Mm. Setting the best example for efficient space usage. The Q1 Pro has a compact 75% layout design while still retaining all the essential function keys. Okay. Dual compatibility again. QMK via. Oh, wireless and wired. So this is also a wireless keyboard. Pair up the three devices. Blah, blah, blah. Battery life 4,000 milliamp hours. Jesus Christ, I could run, what is it, a few airsoft machine guns off of that. Mm, blah, blah, light effects. He, I don't think the other box said light effects. So, I guess this has RGB. So, this is basically the pimped version of the other Q. I guess those are the main differences. Maybe there's some others that 
are not listed immediately here or whatever that I forgot about. Well, I guess proof's in the pudding. Let's have a look. An open source customizable keyboard for peak productivity. That's what it says at the bottom here. <laughs> okay. Jesus, come on. Oh, also, this is also the knob version. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. Manual on card, go away. Another cable, looks a little bit different. This one doesn't have an adapter. Uh, again, Windows keys, keycaps are a bit different. Oh, I can already see the difference. I'll show you that in a bit. Again, same thing, feet and screws. This one even comes with a screwdriver. Look at that, it comes with a little screwdriver in it. Very pro and a keycap puller i was and a switch puller i was about to say that that's missing from this package um <laughs> no. man it is really small let's, let's let this cat out of the bag Come on then. Motherfucker. There you go. Oh, it's black as well. Oof. That actually looks quite smexy. That looked better than I thought it would look. Especially based off of the box. Man. So one of the things I immediately noticed, I'm sure you did too, the keycaps are actually spherical on this. Um not quite sure what profile they are. Maybe it's a proprietary one, but it's very noticeable. Oh man, this is a nice color scheme. The keycaps are a little bit bluish gray, and even the black is a little bit of a bluish black, I think. The chassis itself looks just pure black. I think, oh man, it looks excellent. Uh, knob here is actually on the corner. Man. That is very nice looking. Okay, all jokes aside, I think this is actually a linear keyboard. This one sounds louder. I think it's the keycaps. The keycaps seem a bit taller. And judging by the extra key packages, yeah, there's no way I can show that on the camera. <laughs> yeah, these are a little bit taller. I actually prefer that. <laughs> One thing I noticed about both of these keyboards, and actually a few other keyboards that I've done, well, I guess recently-ish, it's a very simple font, very small even to the point of being pretty tiny. <laughs> That's good, I guess, uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, ho hopefully it's a little bit because of me, but hopefully we finally got rid of all the stupid cyber fonts that uh, keyboard manufacturers put on their keyboards. Because I fucking hated that crap. Now it's a nice, nice little simple, clean, normal font, even if it's a bit small, but man, very nice. Right, so, there's a, a plaque here at the back. Uh, not quite sure what this is. You would almost think that it's a, a remote control thing. Maybe it's the, um, the Bluetooth module, or I guess it's Bluetooth, right? Maybe it's a Bluetooth module or something. Very weird. It looks almost like the front end of a remote control or something like that. So yeah, I guess it must be the Bluetooth module. Uh, some switches, this time it's two switches here, and the port. I mean, it looks very similar to the Q. Um, very similar, especially the style of the case. It's just slightly, well, it's obviously a lot smaller. 
The keycaps are a bit different. It looks a little bit different. The layout is obviously a bit different because it's a different form factor. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I guess they didn't add those fake weights. That's uh, that's fair enough. Sometimes uh, mechanical keyboards, especially this kind of aluminium things, tend to get brass weights in there to, I don't know, weigh it down a bit more. They'll probably say it has some sort of sound effect, but I think, pers personally, I think they do it just to make it way more. Right, so I think we've gone through pretty much everything here now. Um, yeah, very curious to see how these perform. I'm definitely going to give them a spin. And uh, I guess you'll see them in a review uh, down the line at some point. <laughs> um, well, I hope you like the video, guys. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.